Lotus, that's gonna be my YouTube name, I guess. I like it. Lock Lotus, Lock Lotus. Anyway, so first, let me say I wanted to um, get to a hundred subscribers before I started to do my videos, and I am now at 102. And I appreciate all 102 of you. I really appreciate that. I did not know I would get there that fast, but I'm very appreciative. I'm ready to. Uh, drop this knowledge for y'all as far as locks and how the process of how everything goes with that um so i'm ready it's show time so i appreciate it appreciate it appreciate it appreciate uh, my 102 subscribers so let's get into it um i know the last time i had came to you guys i had just did my color uh it's been a little over six weeks because i know i went to got and got a retie um, not too long ago, maybe about a week or so ago, I got a retie. So I know it's been right at six weeks, if not that, maybe about seven since my color. I came on, um, I'm going to do a, just a little quick something on how I get my Bantu knots in. So I wanted to go ahead and get three of them done before, um, I came on so I can do the last one, uh, on camera for you guys. But so that, that's why that's looking the way it's looking. So I'm gonna get to it in just a second. But um, what I did with my hair, because I know my main thing was trying to make sure my locks stayed healthy uh, after doing the color process, because I did go through a whole lot to remove my red and get to this um, ginger color. So what I did was I started with a Alpha G. You know, you can just go to Sally's and get it. Uh, right now, I did the Alpha G um, treatment, and I basically just spray like infusium 23 on my locks uh probably a couple of times a week i really don't do a whole lot with them because i notice when i try to handle them a lot or do a lot of shampooing and things like that it softens them and it's really easy to kind of just pull hair off the ends so i'm knowing not to really do a whole lot of handling as far as drenching them with water or products so you can remember that, you know, if, if you have done color and you're trying to get to a certain place in them, doing a whole lot of shampooing and handling them, you will find a lot of little balls of hair all over the floor. So when I do that, uh, if I shampoo them or anything like that, I'll, tie, I'll braid them down just to keep the soft ends from just kind of pulling off. I'm able to maintain them on there. Um, if I braid it down and even if you just braid at the ends, you don't even have to get that deep up here. Just get the ends braided and just allow it to dry like that. Um, so that's just kind of been my, my small little routine so far. Again, I'm working with, uh, another loctician to come up with some products for, uh, maintaining color treated locks. I noticed there's a lot of products out there for locks, but I'm not really seeing a lot of specific product lines that is targeting, the upkeep and maintenance of color treated locks so uh and the main thing is to make sure we're not putting products in that's going to do or cause a lot of buildup. that's what you don't want especially with sister locks or micro locks the buildup will take you out so with that being said that's where i am with that so i'll continue to update you guys on that right now my locks feel soft they are um pliable they're not hard they feel good and like i said when i'm not handling them when they're you know wet I, I i don't i get little to no breakage or shredding so that's where we are with that right now now i'm looking at my notes sorry so the next thing i wanted to um go over was the my bantu knots um i like the wording style usually i wear it if i got something like what i have on today i just have like a little little track suit little damn jacket overneath it so or over it, overneath it. Come on, man. Come on. Anyway, so Bantu knots, I thought was a good style to go along with this outfit. So I'm going to show you guys. Usually, what I do when I do my Bantu knot styles, I'll just kind of 
take my hand and just kind of part it ear to ear. Um, if you have a precise grid, you'll get a good ear to ear part. Um, if not, don't even worry about it. It's not that deep. Um, so I do just a little ear to ear part um, across the, the top part of my head. And I'll just, you know, section it out as even as I can get it with um, four. And I have worn the two Bantu knot look um, before, and I really enjoy that too. Today, I'm just going to do four. So when you put your Bantu knots in, just understand that um, when you get to dealing with rubber bands and styling, be very, very careful. Um, everybody's hands don't weigh the same. <laughs> Uh, I know if you've ever gotten your hair braided by this person and it feel like your hair, your scalp was peeling off and then you got it braided by somebody else and you didn't feel anything, everybody's hands are not um, the same weight. So be careful when you're putting in any styles that have to do with rubber bands and your locks because our hands are heavy when it comes to trying to secure something and sometimes we tend to get it a little too tight. And remember with Bantu knots, you're going to be securing it down. So it's going to get that extra level of tension in that process. So the rubber band is not that deep. Sometimes I can even do mine without a rubber band, but I just put it in there for the sake of this video. So when you put it in, um, you can either spin the hair like this to get ready to start the Bantu knot, or if your hair is thinner, because my, my locks, even after the color, is still a good thickness to it. Um, but if your hair is or your locks are a little thinner, you can um, two strand twist it first just to give it a little bit of bulk and then um, spin it down into the, the Bantu knot. So because I don't really need the two strand, I'm just going to spin it a little bit. And Lord, I've never done this on, on camera, so just work with me. I'm spinning just to kind of give it secure and taking it around. This is weird looking at this through the um, camera versus a mirror, but whatever, we're going we gonna to roll out. Okay. And then, so you can take your ends and kind of tuck them under, but you do want a little bit of tail, like this little bit of tail, because that's how you're going to secure it with your rubber band. So I got my little tail. It's kind of tucked, kind of slightly. I'm taking my rubber bands. And I'm just going to sit it on there. I'm not even going to try to secure the rubber band twice. I'm just putting it on there one time. One time. And that little tail that I had out, I'm laying it right on top of that. And then I'm just going to get the tucking. Any little pieces in. Once you get it in, you can get, get the maneuver in it how you need it to look. No two band two knots are the same. And as a perfectionist of a stylist I am, I'm over it. <laughs> you can put um, a hairpin in there if you like. Sometimes you may not need it. If you're trying to manipulate the Bantu knot to look or sit a certain way, it's okay to do that. Be very careful with the hairpins as well. Um, if you put a hairpin in your locks, I'm grabbing a pin right quick. If you put a hairpin in your locks, Try to do it where it does not touch your scalp because over time, that pin touching the scalp is going to start to bother you. You don't want to irritate your scalp for the sake of a style. It's just really not that deep. So I'm just putting this pin because I got a little piece back there that I kind of wanted to lay down a little better. So I'll take some pictures of this style after it's over and I will post them for you. But that's my Bantu knots. And then I have my hair where I kind of just let it fall like this. Whew. I love this little style. It just looks just, it goes really good with my outfit. So it is what it is. Okay, so hopefully y'all like that. If you got any other um, questions about it, just let me know. But I'll put some pictures um, in the description. When you guys are styling your hair, I want to make sure I say this. The reason why people lose their locks is we love styling and that's that's very necessary. We want to be able to be versatile, especially getting smaller locks. You feel like they're more, more versatile and they are.
However, you want to be careful styling them because you will um, weaken your lock. You could possibly pull some out. Like the the weight of your hands when you're styling your micro or sister locks has to be light. Um, a lot of styles I do, they look like they are like, oh my God. But I promise you, the styles are not too tight. The person cannot feel the fact that they have a style on their head. If you're feeling your style, it's probably too tight. Um, I literally have to do this to know that I have been two knots up here because I'm not supposed to feel the tension of the style. That's what I'm trying to say. If you feel the tension of your style on your head, that's a problem. You shouldn't feel that. So, and you got to think, some people will wear a style for... A, about a month or several weeks if you if that tension is on your head a month or several weeks you've are the problem is already set in whatever issue that that lock is going to have is there now so you shouldn't feel the tension of your styles so be, be very careful when you're styling because you'll look up a month to or uh, a year two years from now and wondering why your locks are thinning out and it's it's way too much styling and there is a way to do like bomb styles without tearing your locks out so i'll just keep reiterating that as we go along and as i do different styles um just to make sure we keep that at the forefront so the next thing i wanted to talk about in this video was um five things to consider and this is for people with new locks i'm sure if you're watching this you probably have locks that you're trying to style and, and learn how to color and everything like that but i also want to pull in the people, um, I don't want to forget the fact that there are people that don't have locks yet and considering them and whatever the case may be. So I'm going to do just a quick little five um, things to consider before getting sister locks or micro locks. And this is just from, this is my personal opinion, just from, you know, my personal experience and just kind of watching people go through the process along with, you know, me, myself going through the process. So you want to be very, very careful with who does your installs and maintains your locks from that point man when i tell you like this is like very important i'm not even joking i gotta take my glasses off because i'm not even gonna play games and, and i don't y'all don't don't do it because i'm i gotta get my lashes done but don't worry about it you probably didn't even know what i just pointed out but anyway <laughs> when it comes to finding a loctician, if you want to go for the sister locks, get on a sister lock website. I will say that, um, and I'm not saying that you can't find a really good sister lock consultant outside of the site. It just kind of gives it a little more legitimacy. Um, anybody can say that they do sister locks, but if that's the brand that you want to wear, that's the brand of locks you want to wear, you want to make sure that that person is able to give you that brand. I cannot, uh, I cannot tell you how many people I, I do their locks and they thought they had sister locks until they came and sat in my chair and I had to tell them different. So just understand that because a person says they have sister locks does not necessarily mean, I mean, uh, because a person says they are a sister lock consultant does not mean that they did the course to learn the sister lock technique for real. So understand that that is like so important uh, if that's the brand of locks that you want. Otherwise, just make sure the person is reputable, check they work. Um, I'm not gonna say this to knock anybody that is not a licensed stylist that do locks because that is just, is not that deep for real. But every loctician is not created equal as far as the amount of knowledge, experience, and technique that they bring to the table. You can have five um, consultants in the same room with different backgrounds and everybody take care of your locks or install your locks totally different. Um, so just know what you know what you know. Do your research. Um, if you have to court that person for a minute, do it. I mean, it's, it's okay, you know, follow them, check their workout, um, ask questions. When you go get your consult, if it's sister locks that you're getting, there's a whole process as far as your consult. Go get your consult, even if you have to pay a couple 
you know, different people for consults. I mean, get a feel for the person. Feel their energy. That's a whole nother video. Like, people's energy when they're handling your hair, especially your locks. It's just, it's, it's a totally different thing. So if you into that, definitely check the energy. Get around them. Get in the same space with them. Fit, fill them out. Like, hey, it is what it is. But know the person that, that is, uh, is, um, that you're courting to do your locks and maintain your locks. Um, know that you have someone of quality that knows their stuff. There's a lot of people doing locks, installing locks, and maintaining locks that know nothing about hair. They just know about locks. There were several people that sat in the sister lock class with me that were not stylists. They didn't know hair. I could tell by the way they was combing the mannequin head. So it's like, okay, um, is this person going to have any hair left for you to lock? Because you're tearing the hair out right now before you even started a part. I mean, I don't know. So I just say really understand what you're dealing with because everybody, every loctician is not the same. They're not going to treat the hair the same and all the hands don't weigh the same in all areas. So with that being said, um, also um, get to know and understand the texture and the condition of your hair because... You have some people that would really love to have sister locks or micro locks, but the density of their hair does not say so. <laughs> if your hair is really fine, I mean, and don't get me wrong because I've seen some fine or some thin hair sister lock or micro lock people and their hair filled out just fine. I'm talking about severe cases. Be realistic um, about the expectations of your hair getting the install as well as the hair flourishing and growing out and the health of your scalp. I mean, if you have very, very low density in certain areas, know that that might not be a good idea for you to get those locks considering how small they are. And what I mean by that, I wish I could show like some um, pictures, but I'm not going to do that. But if somebody's hair is really dense, let's say they have, for the sake of just numbers, let's say they only have like, 30 pieces of hair in one area that would be uh, an appropriate size, uh, size to, to actually say it's a micro lock or a sister lock. If the sizing is this big and it's only 30 strands of hair in there, that may be a problem in comparison with somebody that may have 100 strands in that spot. You see what I'm saying? So be realistic because over time what you don't want is that those little those few strands of hair i always say a little spoon of hair the little spoon of hair that's in that that micro lock or that sister lock section or parting section uh, may not be strong enough to hold that lock over time in the beginning it may be okay but after some reties and you know just some manipulation some moving about as the lock get longer it gets a little bit of weight as it starts to swing on that base it may not be a good idea for that lock to be there so just Consider all of that before you do it because I know right now there's some things going around about sister locks and micro locks and people losing their locks, but people got to understand that there's things to be considered before you even get your lock to know if your down the road process is going to look like it needs to look. So be realistic in that. If you go for a console and they tell you probably not a good idea for you, don't go to somebody else and just get them. Like really understand that somebody could really be trying to save your hair down the line because sometimes you can lose a lock and their hair never grows back. The the tension and everything that the lock went through before it actually decided that it was done, it, it may not come back. So, I mean, consider all of that and be very realistic in your approach and your expectation. So, make sure you check that at the door before you even start it. Um, your level of commitment is very important because Sister locks, micro locks, and locks in general are not a style. They are a lifestyle, period. Like, it's just not a style I'm wearing on my head. Everything around you is going to fall in with this new lifestyle of wearing your hair. So when I say your level of commitment, know going in the door that there's going to be some things that I have to change as far as my thought process and, you know, being available and, 
you know, committing to the, the scheduling and the, the timing of it all as far as getting your retires and when you first get them, the things that you have to commit to in order for it to, for them to flourish the way that they need to. Like, know your commitment level. It's not just something you're throwing in and if you don't like it, you can just take it out. Like, there's a level of commitment. There's a level of trust in the process that is necessary for it to be uh, successful for you. So make sure when you get it, you are committed to it. I would say for me personally, I locked in on the fact that I wanted Sister Locks and I stayed locked into that fact for a year solid without changing my mind. So know that you know that you know. If you get in Sister Locks, but two, three months ago you wasn't sure or two, three months ago you was wanting to wear other styles and two, three months ago you was pressing it out and silk pressing and doing all that stuff. I don't know. Just kind of make sure you know that that's what you want because if you kind of a little flighty with it, you're probably going to get them and then your level of commitment is going to be trash. So just make sure that you know that you know that this is what you want because it's a lifestyle, baby. It's not just a style. So boom um know your purse <laughs> okay <laughs> when i say that i'm talking about be ready to pay the money like i just know that it's it's not a cheap style like and if it is be leery i'm i'm gonna be honest with you be leery if if if, if it's cheap and if the person that's throwing them in, because that's probably what they're doing if it's going to be cheap. They probably throwing those in your head to get a little piece of change to go buy some shoes. I don't know. But I'm just saying, no, be prepared to pay for what for the quality of work that you're going to expect. Um, everybody is different. And, of course, every head is different. Um, but it's going to cost you. Be prepared to pay, you know what I'm saying, depending on your setup, you know, five, six, seven, eight, fifteen hundred. I mean, it just depends. The length, the texture, the consult, the consultant, like everything plays a role in your price. So be ready to pay it though. And don't nickel and dime people. If if their price is not within your budget, you're gonna have to find somebody, but be careful with that. Cause you're gonna get what you pay for. And trust me, I know because I'm fixing locks on transfer clients and it, it is what it is. So be ready to pay. Don't be cheap with your investment. Just know that this the initial investment is one time. Everything else is maintenance. But at the same time, understand that you're going to be getting your maintenance every, I don't know, six weeks or so. So be ready to pay that amount. I mean, don't just, don't cheat yourself. And definitely don't, don't cheat yourself when it comes to your investment. Because if you drop the money to get them, drop the money to maintain them period. It's part of the lifestyle. So know your purse. Also, the last one is self-awareness and the transition. And this is last, but it's definitely not least. I should have wrote it first. When you position your mind to want to transition from loose natural hair to sister locks, Understand that the transition not only happens on your head, but it happens in your head. I've seen so many people get, and I'm just, I'm not, I'm not knocking everybody, but I'm just saying, just hear me out. And it's just my personal opinion. So, I mean, it is what it is. You don't like click off. But what I'm saying is, is there's so many people that I see get micro or sister locks and I've watched them tear their locks up from day one because they weren't mentally prepared to see what they looked like with them. I've seen it happen with transitioning from relaxed hair to natural hair, but I see it happening also transitioning from loose natural hair to sister locks. Trust the process because in the beginning, it may not look like everybody else's that you've seen that made you want to get them, but everybody else went through the process. And everybody's hair is not the same. Everybody's density is not the same. The texture is different. The way hair falls on people's hair is different. It's just different. So you can't compare your journey with someone else's. If you get your hair locked and you invest in that lifestyle and you invest in that process and get your hair locked, oh, just the wigs, the braids, the crochets, all of that. I mean, 
I understand it. I do. I'm a stylist, so I get it. But at the same time, know that this is a journey on the way to a new lifestyle. Trust the process and watch it flourish. Watch it take place. Um, we are so used to covering our heads with something or, or giving ourselves something different to look at when we're not comfortable in what we're looking at. Just know that it's a process and it's a journey. And the more you accept that, the easier it'll be to take a look at yourself and be comfortable with what you see. When I first got mine, they were spacey looking and it looked funny. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I knew it was a process. I didn't put anything on my head. I just wore it. The most I did was I braided it up and took it down so it can have like a, a fluffy feel to it. Wow, I did not put my phone on silent. I, I am so sorry about that. But make sure that, um, for me, I did that. I braided it so I can have more of a fluffy feel to it to kind of get me through that. But I knew that this was a journey. It was something that I did for myself, and I had to push through the uncomfortable feeling of it initially to get to this point. So, I mean, it's a whole lot that goes along with that, and... <laughs> excuse me again you know I'll, I'll probably drop some nuggets on that because i'm really into self-awareness and um self-care and just maintaining that self-knowledge of yourself and being comfortable in the skin that you're in there's a spiritual walk that we can walk ladies and gents that it's beautiful if we just can get to the point where we can accept what we're dealing with at the moment and go through the walk and the process. So when I say that, well, I'm glad I did put that last because that, that kind of got a little heavy. But anyway, um, that that's it's a big deal to be able to um, trust yourself and, and tr trust the process and the way you look in this moment and get to the next level of how you want to look. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. But if you're not watching it, you can't see it because you have braids over it or you have a crochet over it or you have a wig over it. You kind of get away from the whole process and the beauty of the transition. So that part is like, that's that's deep. That's serious. So that was the five things. Um, got the Bantu knots in. I'm going to give you some pictures of that. My journey as far as the health of my hair is coming along really well. I um, did the Alphagy um, treatment, and then I'll spray Infusion 23 on it, like maybe two, three times a week. Uh, I really like Infusion 23. 23. A lot of people sleep on it. It's an old product, but it works. It worked back in the day, and it still works now. The reason why I like it for my locks is because it is very light. It's, it's a liquid leave-in um, conditioning strengthener, So and it has your protein and everything that you need in it. So... I like it. It doesn't weigh my locks. It's just a liquid. It does what it needs to do without the weight. So I like that a lot. But with that being said, I really, really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't liked or comment, commented or subscribed yet, please do so. I really would appreciate it. Uh, I will be dropping more videos with styling and um, how to maintain your locks after color and, and just different nuggets. But my, my true to heart... Um, journey as far as developing this youtube channel is to kind of hit people in a way where i um, helping people navigate their spiritual journey um uh, it's a lot going on out here it's a lot of people um becoming aware of of new knowledge and things of that nature when it comes to spirituality and how they just kind of looking and feeling and moving their way through this matrix so i will be dropping more videos on that as well so if that's your thing or if you're interested in it or whatever the case may be feel free to subscribe because that is my heart to heart um journey as far as helping people navigate that it's just so happened that i am a stylist and i wear sister locks and i'm very passionate about hair so i i don't mind talking about hair all day but i definitely want to be able to be uh, available to people that are navigating their um, spiritual journey and their walk because i am um, on one myself and i don't mind sharing the information i mean it is what it is so with that being said i really appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks guys for watching please like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video